Hey everyone, my name is Ishan and I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will be talking about Git pull. In the previous video, we discussed the basics of Git, GitHub, and Git push. We learned how Git push is used to push the content from the local repository to the remote repository. You can watch that video by clicking on the top right corner. Today, we will learn how we can pull the content from our remote repository to a local repository. So, without any further ado, let's get started with what is Git pull. Let's say we have a project on a remote repository, GitHub, and now we want to bring that project onto a local repository or to our system. So, for that, first we will fetch that project to our origin master. What origin master does is it fetches changes from the locally stored branch and merge that to the local checked out branch. So, in the next step, the origin master will merge that project with the branch and it will eventually reach our local repository. Both processes together are known as the git pull request. Now, let's see the process in detail. As we saw in the previous part, git pull first fetches and then merges the changes from the remote repository to a local repository. So now we know git pull is a combination of two commands, wherein the first command fetch is executed and then in the second command merge is executed. This collectively completes the process of git pull. Now let's have a look at what these two commands do. Git fetch command commits files from the remote repository into a local repository, while the git merge command combines multiple commits into a single commit. It merges the branch from the remote repository to the local branch. Now when we know about the basics of git pull, let's go on to see the working of git pull with the help of a demo. In the demo, first we will pull content from our remote repository to our system. Then we will make changes in that folder and push it back to our remote repository. So now we will begin with opening git bash and creating a directory into it. The directory that I will create is, I will create it with the name git underscore demo. After I have created the directory, I will check its location. I will go to the directory. We can see there is nothing inside git demo as of now. Then I will create the directory with the name changes. Then let's go and navigate this directory as well. We can see there is a folder with the name changes. As of now, this folder is also empty. Now let me create a repository for this folder. We can create a repository with the help of git init command. As we can see, now an empty git repository has been initialized to our changes folder. We can go back and check. Here in the changes folder, we can see a dot git folder is there. This folder is hidden. I can see this folder since I've enabled my settings to view the hidden files. If we get into the folder, we see a bunch of directories and configurations. Make sure you don't make any changes to any of the directory. Now let's go back to our git bash. Now let's pull the directory that we created in the last demo of git push. For that we will go to github. In the github we will go to our directory. Here we will go to clone or download and copy this URL and paste that URL here. When we paste the URL, we can see the contents being pulled back. Here when the contents have been pulled back, Let's go and check the contents. When we go back to that folder, in the changes folder, we can see git demo, alpha and beta. If we go on to check the content, in the beta, we have beta, alpha, gamma. In alpha, we have alpha, beta, gamma, delta. While in the git demo folder, we have the git ppt and the git pdf. So now we will make changes in these two notepads. And after that, we will push that same notepads back into the same directory. Now let's open the notepad first. For opening the notepad, I will put the location of those notepads. The name of our notepad was alpha. So in alpha, I will delete alpha from here. I'll save it and close it. Then I'll open the next notepad that is with the name beta. Here I'll delete beta from here, save it and close it. So now let's check the status. In the status we can see alpha.txt and beta.txt are modified. So we will use the git add command. Now to commit the changes we will use git commit hyphen m changes made. We can see two files change, two insertions made and two deletions. Now let's check the status of the file again. Now when we check the status we can see there's nothing to commit at all and the working tree is clean. 
Now when the changes are made, we will push all these files back to our repository. So for that, we will go back to GitHub. Here in the GitHub, we will copy this URL, come back here, then we'll type git remote add origin and paste that URL. In the next step, we will write git remote hyphen v. We can see the fetch and the push command in order. In the last step, when we have to push everything back, we will write git push hyphen u origin master. Now we can see the contents have been pushed back to GitHub. So let's go back to our GitHub and check the contents. When we go back to GitHub, let's refresh it and see the contents of the file change. We can see the changes made, changes made, the commit name that we had given. So when we open alpha.txt, we can see there's no alpha. We have deleted it. It's beta, gamma, delta. And when we open beta.txt, we can see beta has been deleted. Only alpha and gamma is there. And so with this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you guys found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.